So let's talk about the Sweet Blackberry project. Sure. So number one, why did you decide to start it to begin with? Um, well, I started it, I think um, my mother first would bring stories to me and tell me, well not bring stories, she'd call me up and she'd tell me stories. This is when I was on Fresh Prince. She would tell me stories that she found really interesting. Um, she came across at work at her her job heading the Black Resource Center where she worked in LA. And she um, told me the story one day of Henry Box Brown, the enslaved man who mailed himself to freedom in a box, literally, from Virginia to Pennsylvania. And then when the box was across state lines and it was opened, he was free. And I found that story remarkable. And I also found it really kind of crazy that I had never heard of it before. And um, I would tell my friends about it. My friends hadn't heard it. And so I thought, well, this is just an obvious story for kids. You know, a man and having this secret and being in this box and the whole thing. So I was determined I was going to write this children's book. And so I made notes about it. And then I would come across other stories or she'd tell me other stories. And I would think, oh, these are more stories that we don't hear about. And we should know about these stories. And I would put them together and then I forgot about it. You know, I'd go back and forth over the years. And then when I was pregnant with my daughter, my, my first child, I started thinking a lot more and talking a lot more about supplementing it, you know, your kids' education. Like, what do they teach them in the, in the schools? And, and uh, I started talking a lot about the Henry Box Brown story. And, um, and finally, my husband kind of pushed me, like, just get it out there, get this done, it's important. And so I got it in motion and tried to figure it out because I had no idea what I was doing. And um, just kind of went forward and started, and it, and it went from the books, which I still want to do, to films, because that was something I knew I could do immediately. And um, I also liked the idea that that offered parents something that they wouldn't feel so bad putting their kid in front of to watch if they needed a little break. And um, so that's how they came about. Well, and there's a few stories. There's the story about the first black female aviator. That's the one that we're doing, that we're yeah. funding right now. Um, what are the other ones? Well, the first one we did was the journey of Henry Box Brown and Alfrey Woodard, which is that story. And Alfrey Woodard uh, came on board and narrated that, which was a great way to start. The second story was Garrett's Gift about the inventor Garrett Morgan, who invented, among other things, the traffic signal. And Queen Latifah narrated that one. Mm -hmm. And then the last one we did was called uh, Dancing in the Light, the Janet Collins story. And that was about the first black prima ballerina, and Chris Rock narrated that one. And now we're doing a Kickstarter campaign to raise funds to tell the Bessie Coleman story, who was the first black female aviator. A really incredible story. I think it's, that's very dope. Because, I mean, you don't hear about these stories growing up, no. especially, you know, in sort of mixed communities. Like, no, no, I think that, the, the thing is, I mean, for me, I definitely didn't. And I think, I, I mean, I think there are teachers I've learned going around and going to schools and visiting and talking. I've learned that a lot of it has to do with the resources. They're just not, a lot of stuff just isn't there, or the money isn't there, the funding isn't there for the teachers. Um, because I used to be a little bit more critical of like, why are they not teaching these things? They only teach a handful of st stories. And then I, you know, I'm meeting the educators and I'm seeing and speaking to them and understanding the reason why. A lot of them really want to get these stories out there as well. And so I'm trying to do my part and get these, get them into the curriculum, hopefully, but get them in the hands of the teachers and the school libraries. And um, so they can bring these stories to the kids because as it is, you really do learn about mostly a handful of stories and then there's this really short month called February where everything's kind of pushed and squished in there and it's it's relegated to this kind of boutique history as opposed to American history which is what my big frustration is this is American history so these stories they might be about black history but they're not just for black people they're for everybody yeah. this is all of our history this is our history this is American history so I think it's really important, and I also think what's really important is that when you only tell a few stories here and there about black achievements or black people who've made great achievements, the message that comes across is that, you know, just every now and then a black person comes along and does something great. And uh, I think that's a terrible, terrible message. 
But I think subliminally that's what happens. Kids don't realize that how much black people are so much part of the fabric of this country and literally, you know, really help to build this country. I don't think people get it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think part of it is sort of society in general. When, you know, I saw a documentary, um, I'm trying to remember what this guy's name, um, but he, I mean, he basically talked about how when you look at society, you look at someone like, you know, like a LeBron James. Yeah. You ask any kid at any school if they know who LeBron James is, yeah. and everyone will say yes. Yeah. But if you talk about various inventors and people who you know created the cell phone or the traffic light or right. or so forth, people don't know who that is because these people aren't celebrated in the same fashion. Right. But when you talk about the the significance in society, someone that could get a ball into a hoop and with a slightly better percentage than his coworkers. Yeah. Is considered uh, an icon, whereas, whereas someone that, you know, created the internet or the World Wide Web browser is is an enigma to the world. Yeah. So, well, it's what we glamorize. Talk about the significance of the Dolly experiment. Oh, the Dolly experiment, um, I think they started, I think, in the 40s is when it was first done. And for people who aren't familiar with the Dolly experiment, they show children, um, black children, um, a white doll and a black doll, and they ask them which doll is, is good, which doll is pretty, which doll is ugly, which doll is bad. And, you know, without fail, it seems that the children choose the white doll as the pretty doll and as the good doll, and the black doll time and time again as, and this is this experiment, they started it then, but they've done it up until very recent, and they find that they look at the black doll and they say that's the ugly doll and that's the bad doll. And these are really small kids that they're doing this experiment with and getting these results. And it's really heartbreaking to watch because um, it's one thing, I mean, I know that, sure, during Jim Crow, at the time when they started doing this, we understand what was going on in society and how that was impacting children. Now you fast forward to today and we've got so much media coming at kids from every direction. And even when they're really little, they are quickly receiving a message from the outside world, through in society, through the media, everywhere, wherever, because they're sponges, but they're quickly re absorbing that message that their brown skin is bad and ugly and inferior, because that other one over there is, is the good one. And that, to me, is a big problem we have to tackle. I agree. So are, are you telling me that the Dolly experiment today is giving the same results as yes. the 40s? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have it on the on the Sweet Blackberry website. I have a clip from um, Anderson Cooper on CNN doing this the experiment um, with images as opposed to physical dolls. But he has images and he has a children point to it. So I don't know how long ago it was Anderson Cooper and <laughs> I don't remember what year that, that was. Um, but that was, and the result, I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, the little girl looks at, she looks at the picture and then she looks at her own skin and says, it's ugly for some reason, but I don't know the reason. There is a, an actor named Terrence Terrell who wrote a book called Blackie that celebrates the melanin in kids' skin. Oh, that's recent? Recent, yeah. And he goes school to school and reads the book and talks about melanin and, you know, yeah. the kids all join in and it's, it's really dope. That's great. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. I'm definitely going to look that up. Yeah, you should look it up. It's spelled with a Y at the end. See, but I love, see, but I really love that. Oh, okay. But I love that going, you know, head first, like go right to it and deal with it instead of kind of pushing it to the side and we don't want to talk about it. And, you know, it's like, no, we've got some serious healing to do and some, we have to address some of these problems head on and, and deal with this stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, when you told me that this experiment still has yeah. the same results and in yeah. current times, it's it's kind of troubling. But it is, but then when you kind of you think of it and you go, okay, let me imagine myself as a, a new being in the world, and these are the messages that are coming at me, and you try to see what they might see or feel that is making them receive that, and you can start to see it. So, with your first your first cartoon from Sweet Blackberry, it's on Netflix now. Yeah, our all three of our animated films are on Netflix. You can stream them okay. on Netflix right now. And this fourth one, I'm, I have high hopes for as well, the one that we're getting funding for. 
Next. Yeah, the Bessie Coleman story. She's an incredible woman. I have to say about Bessie Coleman, I don't know if you have all of this stuff in front of you because you've got a lot of information. <laughs> but, but it, you know, back in 1922, this is a woman who, um, when, you know, if you talk about discrimination, incredible gender and racial discrimination, she decided she wanted to fly and nobody in the U.S. would teach her how to fly. She said, uh, okay, I'll learn French. <laughs> and I'll go to France and I'll learn to fly. I mean, if she were doing that, if she were around now, she would be on Facebook. You know, people would be talking about her and reposting stuff about her all the time because she's, that's, she's an incredible person who would say, he would do something that's so against, I mean, against all odds. It's something that nobody was helping her with in any way whatsoever. And to go to such lengths, not only get to France, but also I'm gonna learn French, I mean, all of it you know, find a place that'll take me. I just find her so inspiring and young and just had so much energy and determination. I just, I love that. I think of her, I mean, look at her face and you look at her smiling face. You just think like, I look at her and I think, you know, I don't know, I look at her like a, I look up to her. <laughs> you can't help but kind of look up to her. You think of what, you know, anyway, I just think she's a great, well, this is very cool. I mean, I'm very glad that someone took it upon themselves to create these types of, you know, animations and, and stories. And I think it's great that people like Chris Rock and Queen Latifah, which I assume are volunteering their yeah. time to get involved in this. Well. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is, I think they really recognize um, they recognize the importance of these stories and getting these stories out there, uh, and this, what they are for and how they resonate. I think they all get it. The whole idea that with Sweet Blackberry, I want to bring stories to children where they are accessible to them, where they are engaging, and as opposed to just like history, like really dry history lessons. Um, I don't think that does that goes in or does anything for anyone. When it's just this kind of abstract, it's important, and that's why you need to know it, you know, thing. But if you can have them be engaged in the story and excited by the visuals and you know Lawrence Fishburne who's going to do the Bessie Coleman story if you've got someone like Lawrence Fishburne that incredible talent and voice or Chris Rock you know these guys that are there doing this um, bringing it to life I think it it's so it's so fun for them and meanwhile while they're having fun and they're so entertained and engaged they're learning about this real person who had such challenges but overcame them. And the, all of that goes into them. Like I said earlier, they're sponges, so let's give them this, you know, to soak up.